Hello internet, your friendly neighborhood gremlin here, and today we're going to do a build inspired by my favorite board game, Clue. And I lowkey probably mostly just like it because of a movie with Tim Curry and Eileen Brennan in it. If you haven't seen the movie, please watch the movie. <laughs> and just name another classic board game that lets you solve a murder. I mean, I know there's a bunch of cool like indie stuff that's out now, and if I knew people who would play board games with me, we'd be on that shit. But Clue exists in the world of Monopoly and Sorry and games of that nature. So, I mean, it's a little bit more accessible. I've just been watching a lot of people play board games on the internet, so I thought this might be a fun idea. And we're starting here with the dining room, because, of course, how they get to the mansion and why they're there is a dinner party. So the dining room kind of seemed necessary. Here we are putting down a rug that I'm still not sure that I like, but I tried like six million different rugs. I don't know. If you have any good rug coats that do like big rugs that would fit under a table like this, let me know, because all the rugs in the game that are remotely the right style are square. And I needed six seats for all of our characters. Maybe I should have had a head of the table seat for Mr. Body, but uh, that wasn't a thing I thought of until now. So, we just have the six seats, which might have been alarming if you showed up to a man's house and there were only seats for you people and not for him. Might be a red flag. Then again, these people showed up to a dinner party at the house of a man they had never met. So, I mean, they might be significantly less suspicious than I am. Here we are struggling real hard with the walls. The sort of base layout of the room came out pretty quickly. We added a dartboard because I thought that might be a fun murder weapon. And, um, the walls, I, I don't know why it was quite as difficult as it was. But they end up like walls, I guess. I probably should have just used more of, like, the real art we have in the game. Hindsight is 2020. And now we're upstairs, where we are building a conservatory. Because when else do you get to build a conservatory? Also, I just enjoy saying the word conservatory. I had a hard time with the walls, because I wanted them to be like greenhouse walls. But also, that wasn't really a thing I could find. So we ended up losing our brick wall for a rose wall. Because I wanted it to not be shiny, the way the glow-in-the-dark stickers are. I don't know, it was one of those things that just seemed like a good idea at the time. Maybe it would have been better to do it the other way. I try to fit my giant moth in because I do love my giant moth, but I don't know. For some reason, everything about this build was hard. And as much as I liked the idea of the tile floor in here, I liked the idea of the vine in the middle of the floor more. So we are going to change that to like a natural floor. Not entirely sure why it felt super wrong here, because I put vines in the houses all the time without natural floors, but it was not going well for me today. I really just wanted the space to feel like it was full of plants. And I don't know that we got there. Maybe we flopped real hard because I wanted this so desperately to be absolutely perfectly wonderful and amazing. And it just kind of isn't. I was hoping for Renee because she wanted to throw a dinner party. But um, I'm going to be close to Christmas in my game soon. And Moose seems like he was suitably unhinged enough to play Professor Plum. He doesn't wear a purple outfit in the end. And my guy is blue. But I did the best I could. Do any of you guys still play board games? Like fun indie ones or more like classic -y ones. Fun fact about me, I have never lost a game of Candyland. Admittedly, I have not played Candyland in years because it will break my heart to not be able to say that anymore. I was once babysitting for a girl who was kind of competitive and I knew she was going to be upset if she lost, but she really insisted and I do not believe in letting children win because they are children. So I fully warned her. I said I have never lost a game of Candyland, so you're going to have to be okay if you lose. She insisted it would be fine. It wasn't really all that fine. I've never really understood the need to win to be happy. Genuinely, if I had a good time, that's all that matters. Though I am extremely non-competitive, just like in general. So maybe I'm just in the minority? I don't know. Let me know how you feel about it down below. I put vines on the ceiling, you know, to sort of help with a sort of overgrown kind of feel. Not totally sold that it helped. Also, I came back and put some blood bits in and a knife so we could pretend that there was a body. <laughs> I don't know, the only like actual body custom design I could find was in QR codes, but I'm really afraid to hook up my game to that app that lets you scan in the QR codes because I'm like a year behind and I googled it. I couldn't find anyone who mentioned, yes, it is okay if you time travel, you can use the app. I don't know why nobody else was asking, but we aren't going to risk it. So if you like the build or you just had a good time hanging out with me, you could hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. Let me know which animals you'd cast in the clue character roles or, you know, comment on the build or literally anything at all. And if you think you might like to do this again sometime, you can hit that subscribe button. But I will see y'all on Saturday. Bye!